Before we hear our last speech of the evening, I would like to comment on the magnitude of gratitude board that you passed on your way into this room. The speakers have been meeting as a group for months preparing for tonight. We have shared our highs and our lows, our hopes with each other. While each journey is unique, a common element with each story is gratitude. While none of us plan to be here <laughs> personally impacted by a brain injury, we can all confidently say that we live each day focusing more on what we have than what may have changed. The Magnitude of Gratitude Board is a powerful reminder that while we all have trials and tribulations, gratitude remains. So if you are able to sign the board earlier, we invite you to do so before leaving tonight. Now it's my turn. My name is Nancy, which I think you probably already know. I am a wife of 48 years. I am a mother, and I am an employee of one of the greatest universities in the world. Go MSU. <laughs> Go, thank you. I'm also a person who's experienced a traumatic brain injury. In my life, I've done a lot of things. I was a volunteer for the American Red Cross. I was an instructor. I taught basic life support, community first aid, and safety. Through my training with the Red Cross, I received the Certificate of Merit signed by President Bill Clinton for assisting five victims at the scene of a head-on collision until EMS arrived. That was quite an ordeal. Um, I am a vocal soloist. I have performed in and through the Lansing area. I did retire from MSU 15 years ago, but this past spring I took a job part-time as a simulated patient working with the medical students. This helps my memory a lot. There's a lot of studying for clinical cases, and I really enjoy that part. I find great peace in uh, prayer, spending time with my wonderful family, and with music. TBI. I kept hearing that over and over, the echo, TBI. I kept asking myself, what, what is TBI? Well, I soon found out that TBI is a traumatic brain injury. I was driving my vehicle down College Road four years ago, August 20th, when a driver decided to run a red light at a high rate of speed and hit my vehicle broadside. I remember spinning and spinning and spinning through the intersection. When my vehicle came to a stop, it was on the opposite side of the road, up an embankment. I felt instant pain. I knew something wasn't going to be good at all. I was transported to uh, a trauma center after I saw ambulances, paramedics, sheriffs. I could see them through my windshield coming at me. When it was all said and done, I was diagnosed with a spinal injury and a traumatic brain injury. I spent six days at Sparrow Hospital with contusions, abrasions, terrible memory loss. One thing I do remember out of all that is waking up in my bed and feeling an animal, a dog, laying across my abdomen. <laughs> that was one of the good memories I have. They had brought in a therapy dog, and that was a great comfort to me. I had um, a lot of therapy while I was in the hospital. I had physical therapy. I needed help getting out of my bed to do anything. I was in a fog most of the time. I remember hearing family members, doctors, nurses, people talking, but I didn't always know who they were. When I was released from the hospital, and this beautiful young woman named Natalie come up to me and say, I am your case manager. <laughs> and immediately I said, what is a case manager? I was already confused and not knowing you know, what was going on, but because of Natalie, I was able to enroll into origami where I spent eight months of therapy 
physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, um, driving, psychiatry, psychology. I took yoga classes and memory classes. Uh, this went on for about eight months. I enjoyed every single minute of it. Um, there are so many people there with their education and their professionalism that were able to help me through each and every one of my sessions. One of my favorite parts, if there is a favorite part of going to therapy, was going early and staying late. And I did that on purpose to meet the people in the waiting room, other clients who were going through the same thing. It helped me personally adjust to my own injury and be grateful that it wasn't worse than what it was. And through that experience, I met so many friends and some that I still am in touch with today. And I am very, very grateful for that. I have to thank Dr. Langhorse. I don't know if he's here tonight, our neuro optometrist who helped me with convergence insufficiency, which has been a problem for me is one eye turns outward instead of inward with the other eye. Four years later, I'm still working with him on convergence and sufficiency with these beautiful prism glasses that sometimes drive me nuts, but at least they have blingy stuff on them, so <laughs> I'm, I'm, all, I'm all okay with that. <laughs> During my visits to Dr. Langhorst, um, I did have cataracts, but they were exacerbated by the brain injury, so I had surgery for cataracts. During that surgery, they discovered macular degeneration, which is also a possible contributing factor from the brain injury. So I am dealing with that now, too. I've developed what I call the four Ds, OCD, ADD, PTSD, which we all know what that is, and depression. One of the hardest parts of my recovery was dealing with insurance and the independent medical exams. If it hadn't been for Natalie, I don't think I would have been able to get through that. It was an extremely frustrating situation. And then COVID hit. Some people with brain injuries already experience confusion, claustrophobia, loneliness, anxiety, and COVID for me contributed to all those things, especially not being able to see my children and other family members, especially during the holidays. But they say where there's a will, there's a way. I'm not the kind of person who can just sit around. I managed to get involved in COVID and help people, mostly the elderly people and family members who were con very confused about the vaccination how to get it, where to go to get it, the resources revolving around that part of it. I absorbed myself in intense computer work. I taught myself how to find out about the vaccination. I was on my computer sometimes hour after hour just waiting for those times to pop in so I could schedule appointments for people to get their vaccination help them figure out how they're going to get there and what they need to do for a follow-up booster, whatever. So that, that time really helped me and I, that's how I, I got through COVID by helping so many others. Four years later, um, some things have happened. My husband and I sold our home after 40 years, moved to an area in Lansing where we don't have to take care of our home anymore. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. I still see Dr. Langhorse for convergence insufficiency, and we're still working with, with prism glasses after four years. I see Dr. Fry, um, my psychiatrist from origami, every three to four months. He helps me out with, with medications um, that are very helpful to me. TBIs never seem to end. There's always something going on with that, especially as you get older, which I am now. I've developed other health issues that I have to deal with along with the brain injury. 
I just keep moving forward. Um, many thanks, Ron, Erica, Julianne, Kara, oh my goodness, Heather, so, so many people who have helped me. My wonderful, wonderful care manager, Deborah, her patience is amazing. I can't say enough about Natalie. Um, to this day, she's still here for me, helping me away with appointments and everything, and we've actually become pretty good friends and we share our love for animals frequently. We send back and forth pictures of different animals that we, we both love very much. When, when you say, I do, in sickness and health, for better or for worse, you better know what that means. And that man sitting right over there, his name is Tony. He's my beloved husband of 40 years, carried out every single phase of those vows for 48 years. But during this brain injury, despite his own medical needs, he was there for me. My beautiful daughter, Angela, her husband, Carson, my son, John, his lovely wife, Rachel, they all have a background in medicine, so they were able to help me more than I could have ever imagined. My wonderful friend, Susan, <laughs> always there for me, and my good buddy, Ashton, her son. There's another person here who I've known since I was 15 months old. That's my sister, Carm. To this day, to this day, she texts me, calls me, or communicates with me somehow every single day. So I'm so appreciative for my beautiful sister. The wonderful book, Little Men, Louisa May Alcott tells us that a, flower, a love is a flower that grows in any soil. It works its sweet miracles, undaunted by autumn frost for winter snow, blooming fair and fragrant all year, and blessing those who give and those who receive. That's my journey. Okay. Thank you. On behalf of tonight's speakers, artists, musicians, and planning committee, I want to thank you all for joining us for an evening of reflections. We put a lot of time and effort and thought into this event and feel fortunate to have shared our personal journey with you. Many thanks go out to Linda, to Mackenzie, Shannon, all the interns, so many people who have helped us individually get prepared for tonight. And we hope you leave tonight with a better understanding of the various impacts of a brain injury. Having a community of supporters like all of you in attendance tonight makes a difference when we are on the road to recovery. Thank you for blessing us with your presence tonight and please drive safely. Thank you all.